Moving diameter testing has become a staple of rubber testing since it was first introduced decades ago. It is widely used for quality control in R&D applications, providing invaluable information about the cure characteristics of compounds and giving a reliable method to verify that a material meets specifications for production. In order to get the most out of data produced through MDR testing, it is important to have a strong understanding of what the test is showing. So let's take a look at a standard cure test on an MDR and review what it is telling us about the material. MDR cure tests determine the cure characteristics of vulcanizable rubber compounds. During the test, an uncured sample is pressurized and heated in the sealed test chamber while being sheared by oscillation of the lower dye. As the test progresses, rubber molecules within the sample form chemical bonds called crosslinks which bind the rubber molecules together. The cross-link rubber molecules develop a net-like structure that reinforces the sample and increases its stiffness, also known as curing or vulcanization. This increase in stiffness is measured by the instrument's torque transducer, which determines the material's torque response, or how much resistance it has to being sheared by the oscillating die. The main line on an MDR test graph shows the amount of torque response a material has at the peak strain amplitude of the lower dye's oscillation, which is plotted against time. This is called the S-prime curve. Since the material stiffens as it cures, the line will curve upwards until the material is fully cured. The MDR also records the torque value at zero strain amplitude, which is called S-double prime. S-double prime indicates the viscous response of the material. The values for S prime and S double prime can be used to calculate what is called the tan delta value. Tan delta expresses the ratio of viscosity, which is flow or fluid-like movement, to elasticity, which is spring or solid-like movement. A material's tan delta value can be used to make predictions about molecular properties, processability, and cured performance characteristics. By examining the data from the test results, it can be determined when a material begins curing, or its scorch time as well as how long it takes the material to fully cure at the temperature used for the test, or its cure time. Predictions about the material's cure durometer hardness can be made from S prime max and can be useful in determining appropriate filler loading. TC times indicate the rate of crosslink formation at various stages of the reaction and can be useful in determining appropriate quantities of chemicals used to speed, slow, or otherwise control the curing process. These data points can be used in quality management to ensure compounds are within the limits of production specifications. Gates can be set up in MonControl's test parameters to automatically determine if a material has passed or failed meeting the thresholds required for production. Furthermore, statistics from multiple tests can be examined at once to look at uniformity and data distribution among different batches of material.